Okay, I haven't really been doing computer videos lately because I haven't really been getting too many interesting computers. Come on, there we go. Uh, interesting computers lately. I've been getting more like your standard, you know, Pentium 4, uh, you know, your Optiplexes and your Dell Dimensions and stuff that aren't really video worthy because there are hundreds of those all over the place and they're just not really something I feel like recording. But here we have something a bit more interesting. This is a gateway all-in-one computer. And this is a really weird computer. <laughs> I've never seen anything quite like this. Um, it is an all-in-one, but it's not really like an all-in-one. Uh, it's got an Intel Pentium 4 in it, designed for Windows XP. This thing is really heavy. And this isn't, this is less of like an all-in-one computer and more just like a monitor screwed to the side of a computer, really. I mean, I, I don't want to knock it over here. Hold on. In fact, the, oh, the monitor even comes off. No, it doesn't. Well, it would. It looks like it would. Uh, it's got like a joint in here. You can move it up and down. This is a gateway. I said profile something. I'll look in a second. But you can see this is just like a regular monitor here. It's like a VESA mount on the back here. You can see it's got your input, uh, menu, brightness, contrast. And it's just like got a VESA mount on the back of it. You can swivel it up and down. You can tilt it. And uh, on the side here, here we go. Gateway Profile 6. There's your product key if you want it. Got two USBs on the side, a hard volume switch, microphone and headphone. And then on the back you've got your power connector. Now, unlike most all-in-one computers these days, or as I like to call them, desk books, because they're pretty much just laptops that sit on your desk with a big screen on them. They use all laptop parts. This thing seems to be, like I said, a regular desktop computer for the most part. Uh, it uses a lot of... I haven't looked at it, but I mean, that looks like a standard power supply to me. And in here, interestingly enough, we got a VGA port, but it says to use a different connector. And we got this graphics card in here. And this just goes to the monitor up in here. It looks like it's just a regular... What is that? DVI connector? Let's see here. Yeah, that's just a regular DVI connector. It's like a graphics card, so you could probably upgrade your graphics card, too, in this machine if it's a standard PCI Express, and I don't see why it wouldn't be. And there's an expansion slot there, too, which is something you never see on desk books. Most of the time, they use all laptop parts. Yeah, that's just a regular short DVI cable. They use all laptop parts, but in this case, it's a desktop, and it's got enough connectors. Like uh, most desk books now, you get two USBs, maybe four USBs on the back, two on the front. You got USB, Ethernet, PS2, uh, digital audio output, you know, SPDIF and uh, your 5.1 audio. You got FireWire. You got a different type of FireWire, one of those 400, one of them is 800, I think. You got Parallel, you got Serial, you got a VGA. You've got a telephone line, you know, for your 56K modem. You've got VGA, you've got S-Video, so you could probably hook more than one monitor up to this thing. And uh, the back pops off, you just pull this. Back pops off. You can tell this is definitely more of a professional grade thing as opposed to the cheap shit that you can buy today. Uh, I would imagine there's a full desktop Pentium 4 processor under there. Okay, this is not a standard power supply. Somebody removed the hard drive, but it does appear it's just a standard desktop style SATA hard drive, not a laptop drive. Although I'm going to have a fun time getting that in there. Desktop RAM. Let's see, can we pull this, this out with the card here? Yeah, we can. Yeah, that's just a standard uh, PCI Express graphics card. Uh, it's an NVIDIA. And it looks like you could have Wi-Fi if you wanted it. This one doesn't have it. 
once again standard PCI slot up there so if you didn't want to use the 56k modem you could put something else in there that is a low pro profile slot but you've got a full profile slot here and under here you can see the RAM and it's got DDR2 RAM it's got two gigs installed currently and I haven't turned it on I would imagine that this probably works I don't see any bloated capacitors on here which is good because this is a uh, Pentium 4 the heat sink doesn't appear to be too dusty either. Yeah, this is a full-fledged desktop Pentium 4, so these things run hot. And it's a hyper-threading model too, so it's a good thing none of the capacitors are blown up. Now this power supply is not a standard one. Look at that. Ooh, it's a high pro. Now high pro power supplies, there's some sort of crap all over that. What is that? Like uh, cockroach shit or something? I don't know. Anyway, uh, high pro power supplies are kind of known for uh, being a bit capacitor plaguey. So hopefully that's still okay. How many watts is this thing? This is a 270 watt high pro power supply. It just slots into there. Is it a standard connector? No, it's not. So even yeah, basically, I mean, you're still better than you would with most of these desk books. But if this power supply fails, unless you can find another one exactly the same, which you may be able to, uh, you ain't getting a regular one in there. It's not a standard ATX power supply by any means. see here. I guess I'll button it back up and we'll be back and we'll see if this thing if it works. Okay I've got it plugged in, got a mouse, got a keyboard uh, so I guess let's uh, let's give it the old smoke test. Now of course there's nothing installed on here so let's see if we can get into settings. I was too slow. CD, DVD drive was not found. Escape to prevent the future and the warning. Enter to continue. I just want to go into the, uh, damn it. I just want to go into the, there we go. Okay. Pentium 4, 3.2 gigahertz with hyper threading. We've got DDR2, 2 gigs of DDR2, right? Nope. Well, the sticks said one gigabyte on them. So what the hell's going on there, anyway? Somehow, amazingly, the uh, CMOS battery is still good. Enabled for Windows XP and Linux OS. Optimized for hyper-threading. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, hyper-threading. Yeah, hyper-threading is enabled. Pentium 4 boot configuration. No. Um, let's see. So this monitor, I swear, I feel like it should swivel, but it doesn't. It, I mean, the whole computer obviously should, but it doesn't. Let's see. So the disk drive's not connected, so we'll have to figure out about that. I thought it was connected, but it must not be. Thing, this monitor, press one of these buttons, input monitor analog mode, PC DVI mode, menu. This is just like a, diff a separate monitor, really. Uh, picture, advanced, picture, brightness, brightness is almost all the way up. It's kind of dim. Contrast. Damn it. Picture. Contrast. Let's turn the. There we go. I want it on 64, 66, 68. Can't you go. God, this is screwing with me. I See, it doesn't make a bit of difference, but I like the number to be 
Why can't you go to 65? I guess we'll go with 66. God. You gotta go... With stuff like that, you should count in fives. Anyway... Um, excuse my craziness there. It seems to work pretty decently. Obviously, you haven't had anything installed on it, but the monitor is still nice and bright. Uh, this is a really weird computer. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to figure out what's going on with the RAM, figure out what's going on with the thing, get a hard drive in there, and we'll install an operating system. But that won't be part of this video. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Here we go again. Camera zoomed in and doesn't want to zoom back out. There it goes. But knowing me, I'm not going to buy a new camera until this one completely breaks. I probably won't even get one after that. Okay. So I know I said I was done, but I went ahead and installed Windows uh, onto this. I will turn it so you can actually see it better. Went ahead and installed Windows onto it. This monitor is kind of floppy on here. Onto this gateway profile. What is that? Profile 6, I think. <clears throat> and what's interesting is, I, so I went ahead and pulled out the RAM that was in it. And it was two 1 gigabyte sticks, but in the BIOS it only recognized it as two 512 megabyte sticks. So I went ahead and installed two more 1 gigabyte sticks, different ones. And once again, in the BIOS, it's only recognizing it as 512 meg sticks. Now, if I go into uh, computer properties, though, Windows is indeed recognizing it um, as 2 gigs of RAM. See that? So, I guess it's working with 2 gigs of RAM. Um, so I did a bit more research on this model, and it's actually quite interesting. And of course, it's very upgradable. It's just like a standard desktop. Um, but it's actually more upgradable than some of those. Um, of course, it's much more upgradable than your standard all-in-one desk book type thing. Now, this computer currently has an Intel Pentium 4 3.2 gigahertz, but later versions of this model actually came with a Pentium, uh, or sorry, a, uh, what do you call that thing? Core 2 Duo. Now, uh, we're gonna see what we can do here. I don't have a Core 2 Duo to put into it, unfortunately. But, I am going to try, I've got a Pentium dual core, hold on, let me find it here. Yeah, it's a 2.2 gigahertz Intel Pentium dual core. Either that or a 3.4 gigahertz Pentium D. Um, I'll decide in a bit. But uh, I've got most of the drivers installed. There are a couple of them that aren't uh, coming in. I got a PCI Simple Communications Controller. I'm not going to use that, so I'm not even going to bother with it. Uh, the display is an NVIDIA G4 7300, and of course you can up upgrade that graphics card if you wanted to. So I've got my PAL installed. Of course, it's a Pentium 4 2. Point, or sorry, 3.2 gigahertz. So it's not going to be the best performance, as you can see. I still find that people can still dot org, uh, org, not corg. I've found that people can still use, if, if it's got a clean installation of something, and it's running something like Windows XP, a Pentium 4 for basic computing tasks is still pretty much usable. Of course, it's going to be a bit slower, but you can still use it. Uh, a lot of people act like, oh, anything older than like a fourth generation Core i5 is going to be too old to use. Well, no, a Core 2 Duo is more than enough for most standard users. And for some lightweight users, a Pentium 4 is still fine. I mean, you can see I'm it's not lagging yet. It took it a bit to come up, but I mean, it's a Pentium 4. It's it's a processor that came out in like 2001. Don't quote me on that. Uh, in fact, let, well, let's Google it. That'll be part of our test here, just to show you. Yeah, see, it takes a bit longer. Uh, 
When did the Pentium 4 come out? Okay, November of 2000. Now, of course, this is a much later version than that original version, but... Point being, a Pentium 4, for how old it is, is still very usable. So here's one with a Pentium D. But some of these came with Windows Vista and have, uh, have uh, Core 2 Duos in it. Hmm. I like to find a list. Sometimes they have the list of CPUs you can put in it. Celeron D, Pentium 4, Pentium D. But see, there's later revisions of this machine. See this one? Uh, Intel Core 2 Duo E6700. I don't... It, I mean, it's a socket 775. So I don't know if it's a different revision of the board, or maybe just a different BIOS revision, or maybe... I don't think, but maybe I could pop a Core 2 Duo in here and it would just work. Um, but I wouldn't expect it. But as you can see, running a Pentium 4 here, even on the internet in 2022, is not an absolutely terrible experience. I was expecting the sound in this thing to be a bit better. This is the stretch. That's all the way up. But I mean, even if I put it in full screen, it will play it. It takes it a bit to switch. Okay, it's kind of struggling. There you go. So. If you're patient, you can still use a Pentium 4. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cut it off. I'm going to try to put this... Uh, well, let me, let me do a quick bit of research here. I think that the actual Pentium Dual Core, if I could use it, would be better than the Pentium D. Because the Pentium D is net burst. But I'm going to uh, do a bit of research. I'll be right back. Okay. See, this is why I don't like... 16 by 9 recording. Anyway, done a bit of research. As I suspected, the Pentium Dual Core, even though it's a lower clock speed and it was a cheaper processor when it came out, uh, would, would be faster than a Pentium D. A Pentium D is basically two Pentium 4s. It's net burst, and a Core 2 Duo will run circles around any Pentium 4. So, the Pentium dual core is based on a Core 2 Duo, so we're going to install that and see if it works. If it doesn't, then we'll put the Pentium D in. Because theoretically it should work, but it might also not. So, we'll see. So, to get to the CPU, I probably don't need to remove the uh, graphics card and all that, but I'm going to just to get it out of the way so that I can see better and you can see better. Although, if I were really concerned about you seeing better, I wouldn't be constantly getting in the way of the camera. Let's see, can you see? Yeah. I'm going to remove this and just kind of put it there. Looks like this is just held in with four screws. So we'll those.
hopefully I'm not, yeah, I'm not getting in the way of the camera too much, am I? So if this processor works, this is also going to cut down on heat a lot with this machine. Because Pentium 4s create a ton of heat. Now since this is vertical, we want to be careful not to uh, let it fall out or in any way damage these pins. And I'm going to get my new CPU here, which is currently wrapped in a piece of paper. Because at one point in time I felt that that was the effective way of doing that. Oh great, I wrote on it with Sharpie too, so that's good. Um, so this is a Pentium dual core E Let's see here. I'm trying to read it. E2200 2.2 gigahertz 800 megahertz front side bus, so this may not work. But we'll see. We will see. This thing may need a 330 or 533 megahertz front side bus only. I don't know. Very careful not to bend those pins. Because if you bend the pins, it is game over. I'm going to put the heat sink back on. I am not going to do any thermal paste or anything because I don't know if this is going to work yet. And there's no point in wasting it. this back in here and I guess we'll have to put the graphics card back in as well so we can test it I'm not gonna connect I'm not gonna connect all my uh, peripherals or anything like that at this point just want to see if it's gonna post and if it does, if it's going to complain about an unsupported CPU or anything. So, we're just plugging in power for now. And power on. Got a blue light. And it's posting. It says It's recognizing, it says Intel Pentium inside. Uh, no keyboard is detected. So let me plug in a keyboard now. I just want to make sure everything's uh, everything's all PT keen before we go and put thermal paste and all that on. So turn it back on. Uh, go into setup. It says Intel Pentium inside. Pentium dual core. Uh, 550 megahertz processor speed. Uh, let's go ahead and boot it in the operating system. I just want to see. Make sure that it's happy with what I've done here. <clears throat> this machine's from 2007, so it should it should support this uh, CPU, I would think. This crap on the screen, I need to clean it for sure. Uh, why is my mouse not working? Probably because it's not plugged in. Yep. It always helps to plug things in. 
Okay, Intel Pentium Dual Core E2200, 2.2 gigahertz. Let's see if it performs any better. It should, for sure. If you're unfamiliar with the MyPal browser, uh, if you use Windows XP, I say MyPal is the best browser. For a while there I was saying it wasn't anymore. Yeah, it would help if I connected to Ethernet. For a while I was saying it wasn't anymore because they had uh, started having issues with loading certain sites and stuff. The old version was based off of Pale, Pale Moon, I think it was. And uh, it was getting a bit outdated because something happened and Pale Moon and the guy who created uh, my pal got in an argument or something anyway. But now there's a new version and they call it unstable. It says new unstable version. And I can't figure out why because it's been very stable. There are a couple sites like Reddit. Uh, you have to use old.reddit.com, but it works. Uh, from what I've heard, Disney Plus doesn't work, but that doesn't matter. I don't use it. Uh, yeah, this is definitely seeming to have better performance here. Uh, of course, it's still not going to be a uh, like a rip-roaring high-speed computer. It's from 2007, so you can expect it to perform okay, but not great. Um, and that appears to be what it's doing here. It would be better if I had a Core 2 Duo in it, but like I said, I don't have any spare Core 2 Duos. Oh yeah, look at how much quicker YouTube came up. Come on, you can do it. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely a lot happier now. Oh, let's see. How, can we go up to 7... Okay, we're on 720p. Can we go up to 1080? So it is now streaming YouTube video in 1080. Uh, although I would recommend 720. It seemed to be a little bit less choppy. But... Yeah, this is definitely performing better than the old Pentium 4. And I'm going to go ahead and shut it down because we don't have any thermal paste on there and it doesn't have the fan shroud on there. So I'm sure, even though this doesn't create nearly as much heat as the old Pentium 4 did, and that heat, heat sink's pretty large, we don't want to run it without a fan blowing over it too long. Uh, so let's go ahead and twist it back around here. And we'll go ahead and finalize this insul installation because I'm thinking we'll be good. You want to test it with the Pentium D as well? I already have the Pentium D out. Yeah, I don't think there's really any need to draw this out because I don't feel like it. So. Let's take this heat sink back off and put our thermal compound on there. And uh, I think we'll be good. Can you see? Yeah. I make a minimal effort to try to make it look like I'm making an effort to make high quality videos. Okay. There's really not any dust or anything in this heat sink. I mean, there's a, there's a tiny bit. That's fine. You can see right through there, it's clean. There's a tiny bit of dust right there, but it's not plugged by any means. So, I'm going to go get a paper towel. I said I'm going to go get a paper towel. 
I didn't mean I'll pause the video and be right back. I meant I'm going to go get a damn paper towel. Um, we're going to clean the old thermal paste off of the heat sink here. I'm not going to bother with alcohol or anything like that. Since a little bit of it did spread onto here, we'll clean this too. I'm sure some of my really purest uh, people are having a fit about a couple of things. One, that I'm not cleaning it properly with rubbing alcohol. Two, that I'm using a paper towel and rubbing it up against there and the motherboard uh, causing static electricity. Uh, three, that of course that it is still plugged in. And four, that I have writing on here. And five, I'm, ab I'm about to use some really cheap thermal paste. Okay. So, let's go ahead and put it on here. Way too much. Perfect. You don't really have to worry about spreading it out too much. A lot, some people are really concerned about spreading it out. Now, this is way too much thermal paste, by the way. If you watch Vice Grip Garage, you'll know way too much is just perfect. So, like I said, you don't have to worry about uh, where my paper towel go. You don't have to worry about spreading it out perfectly. Uh, it will pretty much spread itself out flat when you put the uh, when you put the uh, heat sink on. And if you're wondering what I'm going to do with this old Pentium 4 that I took out of here, it's a 3.2 gigahertz. I actually have a specific plan for that. I'm going to be putting it in that IBM Think Center right there, which is, supports up to a 3.2 gigahertz Pentium 4, and it only has a 3 gigahertz in it right now. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put our heat sink back on. I don't believe it was directional, was it? Oh god, it is. Let's see. Okay, it goes this way. Sure. And you want to put all these screws in, you don't want to tighten them down yet. This is not a how-to video, I don't know why I'm explaining this. I should not explain it. Uh, because this is not a how-to video. Although I will say there really is no wrong way to do it. Just make sure you've got thermal paste on there and your heat sink is in place and if the computer works you've done something correctly. Okay. This goes on here this way. No, it goes this way. This goes on here this way. Yep, just like that. Although I do think that is correct, it just has to push back. There we go. And this, yeah, this goes on here, this way, and this, yeah, this goes in here. It's kind of it's held in there like that. monitor back in. At least we'll attempt to plug the monitor back in. There we go. And I guess I can tighten that with the screwdriver if it'll be faster. Maybe not. I lost the screwdriver. There it is. Of 
course, we're not going to wrench that down. Sometimes people wrench those down so tight that the screws come out of the port. It's a lot more common than you would think. Especially on business systems. For some reason, people seem to think that you need to tighten those down so tight that you're literally breaking off the port, the screws from the port. But in reality, they just need to be finger tight. Um, they just need to be finger tight enough to keep it so that the cord doesn't pop out. Please spread awareness. It's really, really annoying when you go to uh, do something with a computer and the thing comes out. Especially if you get the computer and it's already missing the little things that go in there. So, the fact that this computer, of course it's a 775 socket, is able to go from a Pentium 4 to what is basically a Core 2 Duo is really, I mean that is an insane upgrade for an all-in-one machine to be able to handle. That, that I mean, it, a lot of machines, of course it's reinstalling my mouse driver. Windows XP and USB mouse drivers are just, really, they don't get along well. So you can see, Pentium Dual Core, E2200, 2.2 gigahertz, 2 gigs of RAM. So we're good there. Yeah, my computer might be at risk. Uh, I don't really care. Go away! Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I don't want you... I don't care if you found new hardware. Um, what's a, something other people do? Just to prove to you. Just to show you. A computer... Oh, I have to log in. I don't have a Facebook. Um... Only thing is, Reddit doesn't really work. Like, so it'll load up just fine, but if you... What is it? Something doesn't work right. I don't exactly remember. So if I click on a post... Uh, I don't want Adobe Creative Cloud. That's a advertisement. Yeah, I think this is it. If you click onto it, it just brings up a blank page. So what you have to do with that... Now, of course, with uh, with this new processor in this, um, this machine could run Windows 7 if you wanted it to, and by an extension of that, it could also run Windows 10. But with only 2 gigs of RAM, and it is a lower-end Core 2 Duo era machine, I would still recommend XP, unless you have something specific you want to do that only works on a newer version. So, here we go. Here's the same thing I clicked on before. You can see I did old.reddit.com and it will bring it up and it works just fine in this case. Um, I don't know why everything's opening in a new tab. That's kind of slowing it down a bit. But you can see it's working just fine. Yeah, it's a bit slower than a uh, modern computer would be. But you can pick up a machine like this. It has the monitor everything built in. You can pick up a machine like this for around 50 bucks, put maybe another $25 of hardware into it. Hell, I think it's worth it. Of course, I got it for free and got the other parts for free. It's satisfying Sunday today, and you know what that means. You put the peach emoji. Yeah, you can see how much better. Oops. How much better it's performing now than it was with the Pentium 4. This is it. There ain't no better feeling in this That is disgusting. Like your nails off. <gasps> anyway, uh... Why do you look like that? They made it out like... Once again, I don't want to get copyrighted here. Let me put it on one of my own videos. But, I mean, for a little all-in-one machine, it's extremely upgradable. I generally don't like all-in-one machines, but this is literally, I mean, this is legitimately, it's not bad. A 
that's 10 hours of uh, Toyota VIP RS 2000, or 3000, sorry, if you haven't heard of that. Let's see, what, see, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any uh, high definition videos. All my videos are in, uh, are in uh, 480 or 720. Let's go to one of the best channels on YouTube. Here is a, looks like a 14 inch box. So, the upgrade from the Pentium 4, is which is a net burst architecture, model. to this is uh, a huge strange, upgrade. Largely because if you look at the back of it, not dropping a frame, it's working perfectly. I can pause it, play it. It's in full screen, it's playing just fine. And keep in mind, I could upgrade the graphics card and all that in here if I wanted to, and it would be even better. So, is it going to be a rocket ship uh, rip roaring speeds doing all sorts of stuff on the internet? No, but for a basic web browsing machine, for your standard user, is uh, is pretty good and that goes for most computers from this age I find that 2006 or 7 is about the oldest I would recommend anyone using as their main machine uh, if they're like I said a standard non special high needs user uh, but you know for that a core 2 duo or hell even a Pentium 4 as I demonstrated is much slower than a core 2 duo and the price difference at this point is not is negligible so I would definitely recommend going with a newer Core 2 Duo system than an older Pentium 4 system although this one actually could run both um, and you can see how much of a difference just the processor made so I definitely recommend going with a uh, Core 2 Duo based system as opposed to a Pentium 4 but they're still both pretty capable even on the internet in 2022 and you don't have to have a lot of money to have a per perfectly working machine. An older machine, if you really want a good machine for cheap, you can pick these up for under $20. Get yourself an older Optiplex like this one. These are very basic, very boring machines. I've had a bunch of them. And I've I actually normally, once I get enough of these accumulated, just pull the hard drives and RAM out of them and give them away for free on Craigslist. Um, but these, this one came with a Celeron, but most of these have uh, Core 2 Duo machines in them, or Core 2 Duo processors in them. And uh, they're from about 2006 or 7. It doesn't matter. 755, 760, 780. Hell, even, an, uh, no, I think a 745 might be a Pentium 4. I don't know. So 755 and up, I would say. Go ahead for it. They're cheap. Uh, throw yourself a bit more RAM in it. Throw an SSD in it, and it's going to run if it's got a clean installation on it. Better than a lot of new computers, honestly. Anyway, once again, I'm going on a rant here. That is not what this video was originally supposed to be about. Uh, so there you go. The gateway. Uh, Profile 6, a very strange all-in-one computer, but strange in a very good way. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Or at least you'll see me. I probably won't see you. I don't think it works that way. Or maybe it does. I don't think so. Yeah, no, that's not right. <laughs>